everyone. In our previous video, we talked about job design and workforce planning. Today, we will be talking to you about recruitment and selection processes. Once we conduct our job design, we should be ready to move into the next stage, which is about creating job descriptions. In studying different job descriptions in different organizations, it's surprising how we see many of the job descriptions are actually incomplete. This lack of information can be problematic for recruiters, for potential candidates and hiring managers. The information you want to have in a job description are really fourfold. There is the knowledge that you want to talk about, the skills that are required for the position, abilities and other related information that's necessary for the person to be successful in the job. With job descriptions at hand, we should now be ready to move into recruitment and selection processes itself. Recruitment refers to the set of activities that are necessary for sourcing, attracting, selecting, and appointing a potential candidate in a job. And the very first step of recruitment, as I already mentioned, is sourcing. So this is about finding ways to attract potential candidates in the job so they can apply for the position and show interest. Many organizations do this through um, media and online advertising. Some organizations have this activity outsourced, so there are agencies that do only sourcing so they find suitable candidates for your open positions. Let me share with you a tip though. The best kept secret in sourcing is the fact that the best candidates come through word of mouth. So if you can have your employees refer the open position to their friends or colleagues in their networks, or if you have your hiring managers uh, share the open position with their networks, you will be most likely to find a better candidate for the position. The second step in recruitment is around screening and selection. And screening process usually has couple different steps. So starting with the first one, usually we start by checking the biographical information in a given CV. When people apply for our positions, they put in their curriculum vita so that they can show us the, the experiences, the skills and abilities they have. And we often try to validate whether this is true. Most of the organizations engage in this activity through um, something called phone screening. So a recruiter or a hiring manager will phone the potential candidate and try to understand whether the information presented in their CV is indeed valid. The second step then would be going into an interview. So in an interview, we would be looking to understand, again, the knowledge, skills, abilities of the profile, the potential candidate who is applying for the job. But we would also be looking to understand their motivation, values and reliability. There are a gazillion different interview techniques out there. Competency-based questioning, behavior-based questioning, technical-based questioning, all of that is fine. Just remember that really no one solution fits all of the situations. The key is for you to understand what you need from that profile so that you can probe accordingly. The third step in the process is engaging in a reference check. Here, organizations would be looking to hear from people, speak to people who have worked with the potential candidate earlier. And some of our organizations go into a fourth step, which is around psychometric testing. These are the kind of tests used for gathering information around aptitude and cognitive abilities. And sometimes organizations also use personality tests. Though there is absolutely nothing wrong in leveraging these Stodog tests, just try to keep in mind that the validity scores are quite low with these sorts of tests. And they do, from time to time, produce socially desirable results. So take it as a point of data in your overall assessment, but not as scientific data. The last step we have in recruitment and selection is appointment and onboarding. And this involves all of the activities from the time you present an offer to the potential candidate to them accepting the offer and then for you to onboard them into the job. The piece that often gets missed out here is around onboarding. Uh, hiring managers and sometimes HR professionals think once the potential candidate has accepted the offer, so they are becoming an employee, their job is complete in terms of recruitment and selection. 
It really is not. Onboarding is a critical part of this process. It's very important that you actually help the employee get oriented into the job and understand the circumstances they are going to be working in. So today's key takeaway is around the question people ask me all the time, how do we know whether the person is the right person for the job? Well, often we don't know. <laughs> so I'm just gonna say that. But you have to start by judging the potential candidate with their experience, knowledge, and skills that are required for the job. If there is a good technical match, the right next step is actually looking for the cultural fit. Every organization has a different culture, and it's so important that the person feels at home in the job. So we're really looking for two things. There's a job fit, but then there is the person to organization fit as well. And if you're ever in doubt, Try to involve more people. The more information and the more perspective you have, it's more likely you're gonna be able to make a better decision. Try to remember, recruiting someone is the most critical part of your job as a hiring manager or as a human resources professional. At the end of the day, it's the people who make up the culture and the organizations we work for. Whoa.